Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how to handle a complex operation with a bunch of kind of little pieces that have to kind of get all kicked off in a proper sequence. So what we have here is uh, basically a pretty little scenario. We have a little Air Force base with a bunch of helicopters and airplanes in it. And we're going to be doing some close air support as well as some combat air patrols. The other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be designing things so that they happen in a particular sequence with each other so they're not all going to be happening all at once to kind of represent sort of the battlefield changing here. So to get this started, I'm going to head over here and create my first support track. Uh, this is going to be basically for my air fueling units. This is going to be for my J-Star units as well. So I'll come into support. I'm going to make this a disabled mission. Press okie doke. Come over here to my joint stars. I'm going to grab over to my KC-135Rs. I'm just going to toss them in there. We just need one at a time. That's going to be perfectly fine. We can come in here. And of course, uh, we want them to be using their nice radars. So I'm going to come in here and do radars, Boop, just like that. So that way they're using the E8's radar, which is a really sophisticated piece of equipment. So what I want to do is I want to design these folks. And there's two different philosophies here. I can either set a takeoff time, I can set a station time, or of course, what I can do is I can also design this to be activated, deactivated at a specific time. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to design it with a station time. Now it's going to take them about 40 minutes or 30 minutes to get into position. So what I'm going to do is define a station time of 03040. And I think that should give them plenty of time to get into position. Now, of course, if I click away, I want to do this. And you know, what it's going to do is it's going to basically kick everything off. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a deactivation time for this mission. And I'm going to go ahead and set that. Woo, press that. I like it when it does it. I know. And we're going to set that to be a zero, which is going to be tonight, kind of a thing like that. So they're basically going to be scooting around that entire time, which is a pretty good, effective way to do that. Of course, what we could do too, we'll offer the operations planager folks. So we can print that as triggered. I'll show you why that's going to work in a little bit. So now what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to create our cap. Uh, this is going to be pretty important for us because uh, there's going to be plenty of irritating things uh, flying around, harassing us the whole time. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this huge area. I feel bad for this poor F-16s. I have to cover that whole region. But uh, they're F-16s, they'll deal. So I'll come down here and I'll go ahead and say this. There's not really a lot of bad guys out there, so I'm just going to keep this in pairs and uh, we're going to keep it pretty simple as far as that goes. Whoops, I hate it when I do that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and create a mission here. We'll call, call this half cap because that's what it is. Could also be area cap, R cap, or something, or it could be a sweep, depending kind of what we're doing here. Press OK. I'm going to leave this as active as well, and press the okie doke button as well. Make sure you pause, by the way, whenever you're doing anything like that. Uh, time on station, naturally, I want them, if uh, the support track is going to be there at 340, I want these folks to be there at 0335 to make sure that they're in position before that actually occurs. Grab our F-16s, toss them down there. Um, let's see here. Uh, we probably want to keep just four on at a time. And we'll do them in pairs. Yeah, that's fine. I don't need to change anything there. Okay, that's good. I don't want them to leave the patrol area, though. So I'm going to leave that alone. That looks good. Have cap. They're going to be on station at 340. Uh, that looks pretty good there. All right, fantastic. That looks pretty good. I'm not annoyed, not concerned, nothing like that. If you were curious, by the way, uh, what it looks like from an operations planager page, uh, you could come over here and you could see kind of how everything's sort of shaken up here. I'm not going to do, oop, not satisfied. That is not satisfied. It's been triggered. Really, the thing I like about this page and what I use it for is just to kind of keep track of everything I'm up to. All the business with all the triggers over here are a little wonky. I don't know. Anybody who's played with this in detail will can tell you how wonky this is. But um, it's, again, things that are a work in progress, they work, but they just tricky. Tricky is the word I'd like to call it. That's probably a better word than wonky. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to deselect all those, and we're going to get our individual objectives ready to be smooshed. So my first objective is going to be OP able. I'm going to go ahead and say a patrol mission here. We're going to do a ground patrol. I'm going to go ahead and deactivate activate this mission. And the reason I'm deactivating this is because I don't want to trigger the mission until everybody's basically gotten in place. I can set a time on station if I want. I can even set a takeoff time if I want. But for this operation and for my own sanity here, what I'm actually going to do is just design a takeoff and landing time. So OP able, uh, looks pretty good to me. Uh, we're going to see the activation time is we're just going to tell everybody to basically start the process of getting airborne here. I'm going to go ahead and activate this at 3.30 a.m. And of course, um, we're going to give them two hours of station time, which will get them to 05.30 a.m. And that will disable it. Now, what you'll probably observe is there's these three little happy buttons down here. Uh, one's unassign mission units, the other one's order RTB, and the other one is a delete mission. As far as I've seen, uh, these missions do not work with custom missions. They only work with generated missions. So uh, one of the things you'll see up here is that uh, we don't have generated missions. Uh, that's just not something we can do easily, so to speak. Uh, again, these are created through special scripts, or these created through like other planners and stuff like that. Uh, we don't have those. These work with those. These do not work with these. Uh, just kind of keep that sort of in mind. For using like low and fancy stuff like that we can do all those things but like i said unfortunately for us um we don't have the capability i really wish this tied with this because that would be awesome it just means we have to do everything manually oh well so anyway so uh, we're going to go ahead and activate our mission at 3 30 and we're going to end our mission at 5 30 which is 
plenty. That'll be enough time to kind of do their thing. So we're going to use a multi-unit mission for this. So I'm going to grab all of my homies here. Uh, make sure we're showing multi-mission, which we are. We're going to grab uh, these folks. We're going to grab uh, these folks. I'm going to order them all down here. And I'm going to order them to be multi-mission, which just means dynamic. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to come down here. We're going to set them to dynamic. Come down here. Select all these folks. Set them to dynamic. And uh, the reason this is so useful is when I click them, I can see exactly what missions they're assigned to. Uh, right now, they're only assigned to one mission, which is OP able. We're going to have to manually unassign them later, but I'm going to use the operations manager for that. I'm not really worried about it. Let's go ahead and disable this mission. Let's grab this mission next. We'll go ahead and add a new one. Uh, this one's going to be uh, OP Ball, OP Ball de More. Um, yes, uh, if you ever wondered where I came from and why I have a hard time saying out and oil, <laughs> uh, I think you can probably finally find out where that comes from. So this is going to be OP Ball de More. Uh, that one's disabled. And uh, we're going to go use the same units here. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to grab this one. Oh. Scandalous. I have the same units assigned to different missions. <gasps> Scandalous. Uh, did anybody else just uh, catch the fact that I set that to a support mission? Let me fix that. Voila, all fixed. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to design this mission the same way we're going to do the other one. Uh, one thing I do want to change, though, is I actually want to shut that off. And we're also going to um, just wonk them. So uh, we're going to give them everything we can possibly give them into that mission. So what we're going to do now is OP Baltimore has been disabled, which is what we want. But we want OP Baltimore to get kicked off after OP Able is done. So how do we do that? Ah, so there's a couple different philosophies for this. Uh, the first philosophy says that we shouldn't enable the next mission until at least six hours has passed because we have to refuel and rearm, and we also have to travel 45 minutes to get back to the airbase. The previous philosophy actually says, or the other one, I should say, not previous because I haven't mentioned it yet, is the one that says to just activate it when the other guys are done. Cool, let's do it. So if I come in here to OP Baltimore, uh, we know that this ends at 5.30. So if I come to this one, I can activate these guys at 05.30. 01. <laughs> and we'll give them a two hours. Wrong. If you gave them two hours, they wouldn't have enough time to rearm and refuel. We're actually probably going to have to give them closer to nine hours because they're going to need all that travel time plus the refuel and rearming time as well. That's an important component there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come in here and uh, we're going to go ahead and say, watch out, it's the 15th. <gasps> Fix that. All right, see, nine hours. So that's going to be a, let's see, a nine plus five would be a 13. So 13 o'clock is going to be the time when that's done. Beautiful. So now uh, we know we're done here. And like I said, the reason this is such a huge block of time is because we have to give them enough time to basically finish their operation with the previous one, get gas and come back and do it again kind of a thing. Now, the cool thing here is if I actually select one of these units, uh, you'll see that I have multiple missions that they're assigned to. Now, you're probably also going to observe that there's a bonus mission in here. And uh, that bonus mission doesn't exist. I want to refresh everything that's going to hide. That was my earlier version. I'm not getting it right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and create our final mission here and grab this all goodness here. Go ahead and grab Casablanca. We're going to go ahead and create a new mission. This is going to be OP Casablanca. That sounds pretty good to me. We'll do a patrol. And we're going to do a ground attack. And we're going to make sure it is disabled. So, so what we're going to do now is that we're going to set this one up. So we know that Alteration Baltimore is going to end at 13 o'clock. So that works great for us because we can come in here and we can set this to 13 o'clock 01. Give us a minute of uh, travel time there. But now we need nine hours for this mission as well because, like I said, they got to go back and forth. they got to rearm, refuel, all that other good stuff. So we're going to come into here, make sure it's set to the 15th, and we'll go ahead and do 9. Uh, 9 and 13 is going to be 22 o'clock. So we'll do 22 o'clock. That looks good to me. I like that. And we'll just do uh, one quick little idiot check here. We'll grab some units. Uh, what do we want here with the Comanches? Because I was talking about them the other day. Boop, boop, boop. Now we'll just stay within weapon range. Sounds good to me. Let's check out OP Baltimore. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. I think weapon range is fine. We can actually probably enable that without too much shenanigan. All right. Here comes our idiot check. OP Able uh, is going to start at 3.30. It's going to end at 5.30. OP uh, Baltimore is going to start at 5.30.01 and at 13 o'clock. Uh, 13.01 is going to be that. Check the dates. Uh-oh. <gasps> fix. Fix, 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 fix. Most common mistake, by the way, is I get the wrong date. So let's see here. 15 to 15, uh, 13, 5, 1, 20, 1, 1. All right. Awesome. Um, that was my little snapping sound of victory here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab one of these guys, and I can see there's a bonus mission that he's assigned to. I'm not really worried about that because it's going to reset itself in about two minutes anyway. So our patrol and our operation is ready to go. And as a matter of fact, if we want to go to the operations planager real quick, we can see very clearly that uh, the things that need to be activated are already pre-activated. Uh, some people like to come in here and like trigger things and set them to be not triggered and multi-mission and generate. That gets complicated. I actually don't recommend that. Um, like I said, it gets... It gets involved, but you'll see what I'm going to use that for in a little bit. Unpause. So we're going to speed up time now. Okay, cool.
But what's gonna happen is my first grooves are gonna go ahead and say hello to those pesky hinds. And uh, they're already frustrating me, so let's fix that right away. Uh, let's see here, weapon release authorization. Those are very, very, very expensive missiles and you're wasting a lot of time firing them at any sort of long range, especially if you're gonna be dealing with something that doesn't really matter, like a, you know, a hind. <laughs> uh, maximum range here, 25%. I don't wanna be wasting those missiles if I don't have to, because um, these guys have a tendency to pop these things off at the no escape zone range, which is fine, but I'd much rather them basically close in and I get them with a gun kill or something like that. Of course, you're thinking back to your DCS experiences, how many times you got shot down by a helicopter. <laughs> Much better, my friends. Now, the cool thing here is uh, they're actually going to run back, and uh, they're going to go hit up the uh, KC-135 and get some gas. Uh, now, if you get that little RTB, and they're still carrying weapons, by the way, the reason it's doing that is if you go to your um, little mission page. Haha, I went to the wrong one this time. Uh, if you go to your missions page, uh, one of the things you're going to discover here is if you hit up my F-16s, or you actually hit up the CAP mission, is because their WRA tells them to return to base after firing once. Uh, if that's an issue, you can just come in here and say, uh, go ahead and do this. That'll prevent them from uh, wasting all that time. Uh, basically, they're going to go back and forth and waste a ton. So what we're going to notice now is if I click on this guy, this is going to be my other 16. I noticed, by the way, and nothing's been triggered yet as far as uh, my later stuff. My All my helicopters are going to be coming over to say hi in a few minutes here. Notice my F-16s now uh, stay airborne uh, rather than running back to the ground as soon as uh, they burn up uh, a couple missiles here. That's important because otherwise they're just going to sit there kind of goofing off the whole time. Uh, meanwhile, my uh, friendly little airbase here, I can see here that if I go to my H-64Ds, uh, they haven't been told to do anything yet, which is correct. OP Able, of course, has been triggered. Uh, my uh, little handy dandy thunderbolts here, my Apaches. Everybody knows that it's time to go. And uh, what they're going to do here is uh, they're going to start making their way towards the target zone in just a few moments. Now, one of the cool things here is if I bring up my operations planner here real quick, let's go grab that one real fast. I'm going to now go ahead and say that this mission, if I press F6, by the way, one of the things you'll observe is um, nobody's been assigned to any missions. Um, and you're sitting there going, but, but, but you did, but, 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 but you did. No, uh, remember, they were not triggered because they are multi-mission units. Let's go ahead and unpause real quickly there. So now what they're going to do is they're going to receive their new instructions and they're going to get ready to go take off, which is what they just did. See how that's subtle and nasty and sneaky? You have to remember that uh, when you're working with any kind of multi-missions like this. They have to be triggered to actually get in the air. and It has a lot to do with the priority of their mission. Uh, one of the cool things you can do that works really, really well, by the way, when you're working with the operations planager here, is you can actually change the priority to kind of solve that problem. So I can actually set this one to be uh, two, one, and then set this to be zero priority. So that means that when this one runs out of time, or I order this one satisfied and trigger this one, this one will take the new priority for our particular mission. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, unpause here, and you can see this massive squad of helicopters. Um, that, that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's a lot of helicopters, uh, basically uh, rolling over into the combat zone. Of course, my A-10s will probably have evaporated most of the target region. Uh oh we found another hind. <laughs> Feels sorry for these guys. Uh oh there goes my F-16s coming by to say hello again. And they're evaporated. See how my F-16s are doing, by the way. Oh, he's got plenty left. Now what he's going to do is he's going to go ahead over to the uh, refueling zone, refuel. How's this guy doing, by the way? Of course, I'm being distracted by the F-16s rather than our friends, the Apaches and stuff like that. Ah, so what I observed is we have now cleaned out the entire enemy area. And I actually want to accelerate my operations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I'm going to go over to uh, References. I'm going to go to Operations Manager, Operations Planager. And uh, this is where you're going to run into some problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this phase was actually satisfied. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this mission. I'm going to trigger this first of all. And I'm going to go ahead and activate this mission because I think, you know, why not? I've got plenty of airborne units. Now watch what happens here. So I'm going to give everything a moment to kind of correct itself. And if you observe, you will notice all of those units, so rather than saying, you know, it'd be cool if we went and did our mission, let's RTB. As a matter of fact, when you click on them, you will observe the fact that this particular operation now, Operation Baltimore, ASUW Patrol, is now set to inactive. And if I come in here, you'll see it is inactive. So one of the things I can do is I can activate it. Now, the problem you will see is once they've been ordered to return to base, they are engaged with returning to base. I can't emphasize this problem enough. Uh, this is uh, something you will face over and over and over and over and over again. You cannot switch them to the new mission without the new mission being activated. I can't say that enough. 
Otherwise, once they've decided to RTB, they're going to RTB no matter what. Now, of course, um, I can press F6 over here. And like I said, this is one of the downsides and things you got to be careful with is I can go in here and I can actually grab all these guys. Notice, by the way, they're on the correct mission, which is what we wanted them to do. I can come in here and instantly ready them. And I'll basically say, no, you guys are good to go. And the nice thing, of course, is I'll let me ready all of them immediately. Ready arm, ready arm. And the cool thing here is uh, they're immediately going to take to the sky and they're going to go run up to Operation Baltimore here. I'll give them a few moments. Of course, uh, they have to get themselves uh, all their pilots and stuff ready. Let's double check to make sure I didn't do something silly here. Uh, nope, they're good. They'll be taken off momentarily, kind of a thing like that. Operation Baltimore, you, you, you're you active, my friend. You're active. I swear you're active. I know you're active. Notice, by the way, Operation Able is still active. So we want to either inactive this one or, as you can see, it's set to satisfied. So it knows that it doesn't need to do that. I did mention that this was going to be challenging. Now, if I press F11 again, do you notice that Operation Baltimore immediately went back to inactive? The reason it did that is because it has an activation time. See how that works? That's uh, something you have to be so mindful of. So if I disable that now, and I've just gotten rid of that particular point, now if I unpause, of course, all those units that were on the ground, go running out. See how that happens? Now, this is where everybody gets the magic moment. They sit there going, is it possible to order these guys to abort and go do Operation Casablanca? Oh boy, you had to ask. <sighs> let's show you what happens. So let's head to Operations Planager. Uh, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna say that we're actually done with this. We're gonna say it's satisfied. I'm also gonna say that this mission is now triggered. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press my F11 key. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this mission. Uh, the reason we're gonna activate this mission is I'm gonna press clear. So now Casablanca has been activated. Um, we're gonna let a little bit of time pass here. Pause and pause. And then we're going to deactivate Operation Baltimore. So I'm actually going to pause real quickly here. I'm going to click on this unit real quick. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear the deactivation time. Click on this one itself. I'm going to go ahead and set inactive. I'm going to make sure that this thing has been triggered. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, unpause. Now what you're going to observe here is an interesting little action that's going to occur. You're going to see all my lovely helicopters. They're rushing into the combat zone. They seem to be, uh, you know, something's going on with this hind. It seems they're ignoring everything we asked them to do. Oh, they just... They just, they just want to do something. You know what they want to do? They want to go to the other place because they had to finish their first waypoint. Just like that. So now these units, now that they've hit their operation, have all shifted to Operation Casablanca. So as you can see, the operations planager, you know, coupled with using activation and deactivations very carefully and precisely, give you an amazing capability. Now the problem you'll probably observe is several of these units have no idea what they're doing right now. Uh, you can see this whole group here, for example, is a completely clueless. Uh, that is always a function of uh, kind of when those particular things are gonna happen. That's because of the order of operations in which the system actually activates and deactivates things. If that happens to you at any point, you can just run back here and actually just kind of give them a little kick to kind of encourage them to go back onto the correct mission that they need to do. So as I was saying, the whole system is very, very, very tricky to get perfect. So when you are using this system, expect to have a lot of little things like that, especially when you're using multi-mission units. Now, the cool thing is they're all going to run up north and uh, kind of do their thing here. And you can see they're having a funnel time of it, uh, basically spamming all those artillery pieces that are put in place. And of course, uh, they're having a good old time and skipping Operation of Baltimore completely. So as you can see, it's a very, very sophisticated system you have it here. Uh, by the way, one of the things you could do here is if you brought up this guy, one of the things you can actually do is you can pick up Operation Casablanca and you can double check to see who's actually assigned and who's actually doing stuff with it right now to make that a little bit easier for that purpose. The really critical thing here is those two systems really want to talk to each other. The uh, multi-mission units don't like to take off unless they're triggered. Now, there's two ways we can trigger them. Uh, we can take trigger them from here by triggering them or we could use the operations manager for the purposes of triggering them. Second thing, this is really important. If two missions have the same priority and they're both active and they're both triggered, the first mission activated will be the one that receives all the units. If you don't fix that by tweaking the priority, for example, it's always going to give you issues with that. And as you can see from our several examples, this is a rather picky tool. You really have to take your time and really think it through, which is why, like I said, the operations manager is really there to kind of help you keep an eye on things more than it's going to be there for the purposes of handling things. But that doesn't mean we didn't have a successful operation, and it doesn't mean we weren't able to kick everything off. Enjoy.